Hi everyone, this is Piyush Ranjan, the founder and the chief consultant of Management Masters, a boutique admissions consultancy firm for the top MBA and MIM programs in the world. Now, this is our last video in our video series, and today we have another very special guest, Lakshman Teja. He is pursuing his Masters in Management course from the Strategy and International Management at the University of St. Gallen. Uh, this program is ranked number one in the world for the last consecutive eight years. We just had a guest previously as well, Nelly Staneva, uh, who graduated a few years earlier, and Lakshman is currently studying at SIM program. Uh, so let's let's talk to Lakshman. Uh, Lakshman, thank you for joining us. Uh, could you please give us a brief introduction about yourself, how you came about to the SIM program, and what were your expectations? Uh, thank you for the invite. Happy to be here, and hi everyone. Um, I hope I hope this is uh, uh, enriching for you for your preparation. And to start off, uh, thank you again for the introduction. Uh, how I came about SIM, it's it's actually an interesting story. It goes back uh, even before looking at an MIM program. I was considering uh, an MBA program. Uh, I actually even applied to the Harvard Business School 2 plus 2 program. Uh, and then just to get an idea of uh, what is it that people look for, what is it that admission consultants look for, what is it, uh, what matters when you're applying for a top ranked uh, master's program related to business or management. So although I knew that I, I didn't really have a great chance because it's, it was the odds weren't great, simply put. So it gave me, uh, I would say, like firsthand insight into what uh, what is needed because I spent like a couple of months on making the application. So that gave me sort of uh, an understanding with which uh, I worked for the next two, three years to develop my profile accordingly and carefully choose the right experiences. Well, suppose uh, towards the end of my undergrad in engineering, I had a choice of uh, whether to pursue research or whether I uh, should pursue leadership via management or public sector. Or I, I didn't know leadership in what sense, but I decided that probably leadership was the right way. I thought I would like to get a bit of experience into, say, uh, the business side of things, the public policy side of things, the nonprofit sector, and then eventually after all those experiences after i did my own startup as well uh, i sat down and i thought okay what now with the experience i felt that perhaps it's the business world where i can create the most impact and then with that i again went back to the mba uh, and then i actually spoke to an admissions consultant to understand um, to just get a fair bit of idea a third party perspective on where i stand and then i realized i may because of you know, dabbling around, I may need like one to two years more of uh, proper professional experience in one place in a business firm. Just by mistake, I downloaded the brochure for even the Masters in Management program at HSC. And then I thought, okay, I have anyway downloaded it, so why not take a look at it? And then when I looked at it, I felt like uh, Masters in Management is more suited towards what I wanted as compared to what an MBA offered in terms of the curriculum. And uh, of course the fees was a point, but it was more about what was the offering and what is it that I expected of a master's degree at this point? And then what are these programs offering me? So, um, so yeah, so I looked at HSC, Paris, MIM, and then I liked it. So I thought, okay, if I'm anyway going to apply for an MIM, why not look at the rankings and uh, when I look at other programs, then I looked at St. Gallen. I uh, like the first time I looked at the whole curriculum, the you know the emphasis points on leadership or reflection, on responsible you know leadership. Uh, they they are they sort of appeal to the kind of thing I was looking at, and then I felt this would be a really good program. It's a small program, so there's focus on you. You can get a lot of the, out of it. And then, yeah, with, with this, uh, I went and applied. I applied to both SIM and HSC Paris. And yeah, as it worked out, fortunately, I got through SIM and then I didn't have to think about anything else. 
Okay, that's that's absolutely amazing. I see that in your profile you have you have a lot of experience with uh, you know, startups and NGOs and sustainability. As you said, you yeah. always had a, a lot of focus for uh, sustainable uh, degrees. So uh, yeah. uh, and Sim is kind of known for its sustainable approach or a social leadership approach for uh, yeah. in its master's program as well. So yeah. so how has this uh, worked out for you? How have you found? Uh, has this been a very a good experience for you? So, can you tell us a bit more about how it has worked out for you? Yeah, the sim experience. I would say uh, it has been great uh, on two counts. So, the first key aspect is that because I come from a background which is non-business, uh, no economics, no finance, nothing, nothing related to business uh, in terms of theory. Uh, I get to take away quite a bit even from the classes, which is not the same when people come from a business background because you know uh, you know you have people from different backgrounds, so there is some bit of reputation, right? So somebody from a non-business background gets gets to gain a lot more, uh, I would say, in terms of uh, you know the theoretical aspects. On the other side, in terms of the people aspect, uh, I would say like the more you go forward in life in, especially with the career side of things as well uh, the networks that you have become more and more important uh, i don't i'm not sure if any other course at this level offers that kind of uh, cultural uh, experience, exposure and then you know even when i look back there's a lot of uh, communication based learning and communication when you, any kind of teamwork communication is sort of the bedrock of uh, you know how you perform totally agree totally agreed uh, yeah. i think that was also one of the biggest learnings for me when i was at the same program mm -hmm. as well uh, yeah. the, the amount of diversity that we see there and then you know the, the differences that come because of that it's absolutely uh, a stunning learning experience yeah. so uh, let's let's talk about uh, a bit more about your MIM journey. So when you started applying mm -hmm. for MIM programs, uh, Saint Gallen mm -hmm. is known for you know a, a very different sort of application process itself. Uh, and in the application yeah. process, apart from the normal motivation uh, statement mm -hmm. of uh, purpose or motivation letter, they also ask uh, video interviews nowadays. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have had a lot of uh, talk about uh, the. You know how to approach the essays or how to uh, how to be authentic in the essays but then we have never really uh, tackled the question of how to you know tackle the video interviews in our uh, mm -hmm. in our interview sessions that we have had right. until now so maybe this is something that uh, you could really uh, put a, a very nice spotlight on uh, so mm -hmm. could you share how did you actually prepare for the video interview what sort of questions were asked and and uh, mm -hmm. how did you manage to answer those questions, which actually led to uh, getting your admit call from St. Gary? Right. So um, before I talk about the video interview, I would like to, I think, yeah, sort of clarify that they don't really put a lot of emphasis on the motivation letter. They look at the other aspect. They look at the profile holistically, the GMAT, GPA, which gives for the academic performance, uh, academic, yeah, academic performance. And then they look at your extracurriculars, uh, going deep into the details. The questions they ask, like uh, some are descriptive and some are more on the personality side of things. So one of the questions I got was, okay, what do you know about Switzerland? So you have like, 30 seconds to think about the question and about a minute to answer the like answer the question but depending on what question it is uh, for suppose if it's a personality based question um, i would say like yeah uh, would you show emotions in a team setting so that was a question so for that i got i think uh, one to one and a half minute to think and then about two and a half to three minutes to answer i'm not entirely sure if you say that no it's bad to show emotions then it may be something that's not realistic. And if you say you should really show emotions, then you have to also uh, say something, you know, to ensure that, you know, it doesn't blow off and you don't, you don't go beyond a certain line. And then I think these can only come in two ways. One is you need to have that kind of a personality and you need to bring it out. And the way to bring it out is to actually practice the mock test mock video interviews you have interview questions you have that is absolutely incredible advice uh, it's it's uh, absolutely true you have to be your authentic self and at the same time the video interviews allow you 
you know, to showcase that you are structured, you can plan uh, quite nicely and then you can yeah. you know, be quick on your feet when it comes to thinking. Yeah. So that, yeah. is, that is really nice uh, advice. I'm pretty sure most of the applicants for, uh, for the SIM program will really uh, enjoy this, uh, this advice for sure. Uh, so let, if, we, if we talk about something else, uh, how, when you said that you applied to, to the SIM program and HEC Paris. Uh, did you also look at some other OTMIM programs and you know, how many did you get through? Uh, so else? I had a multiple round strategy. So, uh, so by the time I realized I want to apply for an MIM, the first round was already a pass. So the first round I had was my, the second round of applications, uh, at least for HEC and uh, the SIM. So I did uh, HEC and SIM in that round, just the two of them, because I thought I, I felt confident that I will uh, get through at least one of them because of the kind of profile I had, the kind of preparation I had, uh, and then but but then I also had a backup. So for the next round, I was already looking at preparing my applications for uh, ESSEC, then at the same time, ESCP Paris. So I did not apply through the SAI route because uh, at HEC, I applied both uh, MIM program as well as uh, sustainability program. So yeah, so I did have a backup, but then by the time I had to like work on the application, uh, put in significant effort, before that, I had my result for uh, Sengal and then obviously i didn't have to think anymore yeah I, it was something similar with me as well once i had mm -hmm. the results for saying gun and i didn't really care about it <laughs> if i may ask what was your uh, what was your gmat score uh it was 750. ah same as me i did a lot of practices like uh, that is one of the advice for people who are giving the gmat uh yes they focus on the theory but then give a lot more attention to uh spaced practice test like do it in the same time as you would be giving your test and then don't do two or three practice tests in two three days do a practice test then give time for analysis then give time to you know brush up on the theory aspects that you need to cover or the small practice aspects you need to cover and then after a two three days space then give another test to see how you've improved so yep. my practice test went well so i had four tests practice tests with two at 750 and two at 760 so i was doing uh, quite well so I, I would say the practice method really works that is that is very nice uh though i would not suggest for the viewers to to start uh, to try and do their gmat in 20 days you were able to do that no that was because of the second yeah. attempt yeah because you already had a good start yeah uh, what would you suggest to to the fresh candidates who are going to apply to mm -hmm. mim this year uh, mm -hmm. So when they are applying to SIM or uh, you know uh, to SIM or to ESSEC Business School or HEC Paris or the you know or the other top schools in Europe mm -hmm. or MIM, what would you give as a piece of advice to them? How uh, in terms of when should they start or what should they worry about or not worry about when they are preparing their so One thing to do is to start early because uh, you often need a lot of revisions that you don't really understand initially because even with the essays you write something and then if you give it time overnight or one day and then you look back at it you yourself feel that you know there, there's there needs to be some kind of edits you see flaws in uh, you know the structure or something it's it's never you never it's very difficult to do it perfectly the very first draft so that's why a lot of people do drafts so not just the essay, but different parts of the application. You need so much time to do it. So a key advice would be to start early and practice and make sure you present your best self. And the second aspect is a lot of people uh, go down this rabbit hole of, you know, what do the admissions managers want to see on the application? I would say don't really focus on that. It, it is really a rabbit hole. Try to bring out your authentic self, bring out your you know, best experiences that you think would bring value to the class. Because in the end, what the admissions managers are looking for is how you bring unique value. So if you try to fit in, then it's of no use either to you or to the admissions team. It won't get you anywhere. So be your authentic self and then see, actually think about what is the uni what are the unique aspects that you're bringing that would help your future prospective classmates. So if you think that way, you're, you'll 
you're more likely to you know put up a better application put up a better version of yourself and then that is more likely to help you get yeah you still have sort of a you know a few credits left you still have a right. few credits left to do with at your program so how are you planning to use these you know the the amount of time that you have left uh, and uh, when it comes to looking for jobs uh, what sort of uh what are you trying to do and uh, what sort of advice would you give to people who you know who want to move to europe for a uh, to look for a new mm-hmm. good job for themselves as well so the first thing like the main advantage of sim one of the advantages of sim is that you have a lot of reflection uh in the program like you have to reflect over a lot of things so uh, i sort of reflected on what is it that i want out of my career and you know say the next 5 10 years and based on that reflection i have uh, like sort of opened up in terms of what are the different kinds of roles i'm looking at what is in terms of the priority order what is more important is it the location is it some kind of a industry or a function so what is it that you're looking at so the first thing is that's what i did and then at the, uh, after that i realized that i would prefer to stay in switzerland for a bit if possible uh, if not then i would of course look at greater europe uh and then yeah like you always have the option of uh, moving back to india if you you know come across as uh, somebody who's bringing in something unique then even though the thing even though things are difficult you will stand a chance and this is the case even for greater europe so you have to really showcase what you bring to the table and at the same time of course you have to stay put in uh, you know trying and then reaching out to people the networking aspect is obviously important trying to talk to people and trying to communicate what are you passionate about what is it that you want to why is it that you want to stay in europe why is it that you want to work in say a particular industry or a particular function uh, if you, if they see that you know you really are interested uh, then they are more like at least one of the people is likely to give you a shot at least for an internship and then once you have the internship if you have the smarts to get into same and if you have the you know drive uh, same or any other top program for that matter if you have the drive then uh, i'm sure you'll be able to give your best on the internship and try to convert it yeah and i think that's also you know a strategy 101 that you just gave uh, trying yeah. to find your core competencies first and once yeah. you have your core competencies then going on to capture the market <laughs> exactly so, yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah that's a uh, sim for you strategy and in international management 101 <laughs> uh, seems like i learned strategy well here <laughs> So so it has been it has been a wonderful uh, time talking to you Lakshman thank you so much for your time pleasure same. I wish you the best for your uh, for your future commitments I hope you find a job very thank soon Thank you so much it works out very well and uh, we'll keep in touch thank you so much for your time again